What is Spider-Man's favorite brand of rice? Uncle Ben's. Thanks for stopping by my YouTube channel to check out Comic Book Editions Volume 159. In today's video, I have an AOK -okay from No Good Comics. I also have some other back issues that I've recently added into my collection to share with you. But I want to get started today with a back issue haul that I purchased from Unknown Comics. The first one up is the facsimile version of X-Men 101. And you can see this version is foil out of its mind. I love this Dave Cockrum cover to start out with. X-Men 101 has always been one of my favorite issues, but I think foiled, it looks even sharper and even more stunning. Of course, the original came out in 1976, and just last month, Marvel re-released it as a facsimile. I had the dollar version reprint that they did, and as a childhood collector, I received the original as a Christmas gift one year from my grandparents. So that holds some very special sentimental value for me. And I've talked about it in other interviews when I've been a guest. Specifically, I want to say on the 10-1-1 show with Gary B. I delved a little more in depth about how my copy of X-Men 101 means the world to me. And you could offer me a 10.0 graded sign by every creator or actor or actress that's ever played the Jean Grey character. And I wouldn't accept it if I would have to turn in that original copy that I have of 101 that I received as a Christmas present as a childhood collector. That's how much it means to me. I recently decided that I needed to take that out of my long boxes and move that into a more secure, special place and a fireproof place as well. So I've done that as well. It's earned that status in my collection because it just means the world to me. That specific issue, that specific copy even means the world to me. But I was very happy to see Marvel re-release this as a facsimile edition. I tend to use those more as my reader copies. And not only did they have an exclusive here with the original cover, just a foil version, they also decided to do some original covers. So this is pretty awesome. This is the Nathan Surdsey, hopefully I pronounced his name correct, uh, exclusive version with the trade dress there. We have Gene just, uh, wow, as Phoenix. You know, you might remember that X-Men 101 was the first time that Wolverine ever started flirting with or expressed a romantic interest in Gene Grey. Now, they did retroactive some of that later on, like in classic X-Men in the back stories, the, the B stories. You know, they added that he had that romantic interest or there was a flirtation between the two of them. But this was the first time ever published, was in the original X-Men 101, that that Wolverine Jean Grey flirtation kind of took place. And besides picking up the trade dress version, you might as well get the combo, right? And go for the virgin cover version of this too. This is so nice, but in person it's even nicer. I tend to think it's not looking as great on screen as it actually looks in person, and I'm so happy that Marvel re-released these. I'm a big fan of the facsimiles, and I'm happy that I decided to pull the trigger on these as well. It's always good, even though I had the book in my collection and even had a dollar reprint version of it to still have another copy of it too. Love it, and uh, I think Nathan Searcy did a really good job um, staying true to the original, but still being modern at the same time with his take of, uh, you know, essentially the first appearance of Phoenix. Since I was shopping at Unknown Comics, I decided to pick up a few more books while I was at it. How about this one? Uh, sticking with the foil theme here, it's Amazing Spider-Man 121. Earlier this year, Marvel did a facsimile release, and Unknown Comics had a foil version of it, too. I haven't checked yet. In the original story, they say that the fight between Green Goblin and Spider-Man takes place on the George Washington Bridge. But by the looks of it, it's actually on the Brooklyn Bridge. And I think in all of the reprints since the original, they've changed it to the Brooklyn Bridge. But since this is a facsimile, it probably should say the George Washington Bridge. I need to check into that. I haven't actually taken this out and read this yet. 
You know, The Death of Gwen Stacy, the first of a two-parter, uh, starts with this story. I know I have read that story, but it has been a long time. I definitely know the gist of the story and what happens in the story, but I'm excited to sit down and actually reread this one as well. And I decided to follow it up with part two. Here is uh, the facsimile version of Amazing Spider-Man Volume 1, Issue 122. And I do remember a fan poll that was done of the 100 greatest Marvels of all time. And if I'm remembering correctly, this story from this issue came in at number 19 on that top 100 poll. Good stuff there. And we didn't see Green Goblin as a character for quite some time after this in a Spider-Man story. You know, they, they tended to um, replace the Green Goblin character with a newer one that they created in an updated version, you know, Hobgoblin. And I do remember the excitement and the hype that the Hobgoblin character brought with him. But since, like I said, I was ordering from Unknown Comics, I thought, let's put a few more in there, save on that shipping. And... Uh, the foil version just seemed a little bit more special, and for the funsies of it, I said, I think Spy said, Spider Friend, go for it. So I did. So that kind of wraps up the books that I purchased from Unknown Comics. But since I'm still showing Spider Man books, let's show you some other recent pickups into my collection. Here is Spidey Super Stories, number 38. We have a Sal Buscema cover. We've got Spider Man uh, riding the train possibly at Coney Island with the Fantastic Four. This is 1978. It has three stories inside. The first story has the Scorpion. Then there's a really quick story in the middle with Spider-Man and Ms. Marvel. Now, Spider-Man had teamed up with Ms. Marvel in the past, and this was an, another appearance. And then there's the story in the end that's depicted here on the cover with Spider-Man and the Fantastic Four. The Spidey Super Stories were always geared towards beginning readers, so they're very easy for a new reader to get through. Spider-Man was part of the Electric Company TV show, which was geared for kids at the time, too. So that's why you see the tie-in Marvel Comics and the Electric Company present Spidey Super Stories. In my area, I don't know if this is a regional thing or not, and I know I've mentioned this before, but in my area, Spidey Super Story back issues are not the easiest thing to find. I hardly ever see them when I'm hunting out in the wild and very even rarely see them at comic shows. Once in a blue moon, I might see one or two, but honestly don't see them very much. And even though they're geared towards children, and I don't think any of the stories are counted as continuity, I still think they're fun and there's some interesting team ups and there's some good artwork in these as well. So there's a, I've got a little short list going of Spidey Super Story issues I'd like to get. I don't need to get the entire run, but... Some of the team-ups with the characters that I like more than others are the ones that I'm kind of going after. And with this one having the FF and Ms. Marvel, I certainly wanted that. There was some Marvel for you. I know you've been so patient waiting for me to show some Marvel books on my channel. The last few weeks have been DC heavy. I'm just going to show a couple DCs for this video today. The Blue Beetle movie is out now. I have not had a chance to see it, but I'm excited to. Uh, we did a Blue Beetle-themed Fanboys Live and the Retro Review this past weekend on my YouTube channel. So if you missed that, you want to catch the rewind as well. Signature King Tony Fett saw the movie, so if you want his comments and what he thought about it, you can catch the rewind on that. Uh, I'm going to show you a couple Blue Beetle comic books. So we're going back to 1986. This is Blue Beetle Volume 6, Issue Number 7. I realize that this is Ted Cord and not the Jamie Reyes version. I don't think I have any comics with the actual Jamie Reyes version of him as Blue Beetle. I haven't seen the movie myself yet. Uh, looking forward to doing that. If you've seen the movie and want to leave me a spoiler-free comment below, uh, make sure to do that because I'd definitely be interested in what you thought of it. Another Blue Beetle comic book is from Volume 6, the next issue, uh, number 8. Uh, the main villain in this issue is The Calculator. Um... So my Blue Beetle collection, it was kind of weird. I had this two-issue gap, seven and eight, that I was missing. Otherwise, I had issues one through 15 minus seven and eight. So I decided just to fill in this gap. Not exactly sure why I had that two-issue gap. I do remember buying a lot of Blue Beetle and a lot of Blue Devil. Of course, I showed you some Blue Devil in last week's comic book editions video. 
I do remember buying a lot of those around the same time. You know, we're talking the mid-80s, 1986 here. Uh, Paris Collins cover on this one and on the previous issue as well. So just decided to kind of fill in that hole. Now I have a solid 1 through 15 for volume 6. I think if I remember correctly, that only did like 24 issues, maybe 25. I don't know if I'm going to continue on and get the last 10 or if I'm happy just having this gap filled in and having a solid first 15 issues. We'll see. Now we're going to jump over to my friend Justin, No Good Comics. He did your boy a solid here. Look what he got me. So this is a video that you have seen numerous times on my channel. I haven't been attending many comic book conventions, but this book certainly has. Uh, more recently, you saw it on my Comic Book Editions Volume 154 video, uh, where my friend Seeking Superman, Glenn, got the sign for me at Heroes Con by Michael Conrad. Well, there's some new ink on there. Uh, Justin went to Terrificon last month, and Tom King was there. So up in the upper corner, in gold, we got a signed and personalized Tom King signature that I am stoked about. Thank you, Justin, for getting that done for me so much. I really do appreciate that. Of course, Tom King's going to be the new writer for Wonder Woman starting next month. They're uh, relaunching with a new volume, a new number one. So it will be Legacy Issue 801, but it will be Volume 6, Issue 1, coming out next month. And uh, one of my goals will be to get Tom King to sign a copy of that once it's released. Unfortunately, uh, the book doesn't come out till the week after Baltimore Comic Con. Signature King Tony Fett is going to Baltimore Comic Con. I might be sending this book back to Tony to see if he can get me another signature on it, too, from another guest. So I'm going to get you some more ink on this book. And you might be seeing this book maybe one more time this year. Uh, on my channel. Ultimate goal is to get it signed by as many people as I can. I'm still not even at the halfway point yet, but I'm appreciative of all the signatures that I have on it so far and all of my friends who have accomplished that for me uh, because I haven't myself obtained one single signature on this. Um, I, I've been at the mercy of my friends who have been so kind in doing that for me. Speaking of no good comics, man, what a channel he has and the content he puts out, whether it's recorded or live. I've left a link for his channel in the description for this video. So if you're not sub to Justin's channel, you'll want to do that. Of course, you've heard me talk about his Omni X-Men show that he does with John's Comics with Kids all the time. And I'm looking forward to the new season of that and uh, participating in that as well, too. But that's going to bring us to the end of today's Comic Book Volume 159 video. What cover was your favorite out of everything I showed? Do you own any of the comic books that I showed today? Maybe do you own an original of X-Men 101? Is it on your want list? We can discuss any of this stuff. Maybe the Spider-Man keys. Uh, anything that you want to discuss, let's talk about. Do you think the foil version makes them a little more special? Something about that shiny, shiny, shiny. Uh, to me, makes it a little bit more special. It definitely makes me take a second look. But I'd love to dialogue about all of that in the comment section below. And if you're not subscribed to my channel, I certainly hope that this will be the video to make you do so. It's a great way to show support to my channel. Give me a subscription, share this video or this channel with someone else that you think might enjoy it, or subscribe. 1K is the ultimate goal. I always say I can't do this without you. It is the truth, and it's also the truth when I say I can't do this without you, nor would I want to. Thanks for making it to the end of this Comic Book Editions video today. Yesterday, we dropped a back issue of the week YouTube short, which actually ties into Blue Beetle same volume that I was just showing earlier in this video. So you can check that out as well if you're interested. We'll see you for Fanboys Live and the Retro Review this upcoming weekend. Have a great rest of your week and I'll catch you next week for this next Comic Book Editions video. Take care.